Welcome back everyone. If you're new here, my name is Brian Jinx, and today we're talking about the latest Obsidian release. We now have 11.0, which is an awesome release that has added many new long desired features and including some really new shiny toys for us to play with in our workflows. And today I'm going to tell you some of my favorite uh, picks of these latest features and how I'm using them. So if that sounds cool, stay tuned. I will not be covering every single new feature that has been added in this latest release, just the ones I think that you will probably get the most bang for your buck out of, and the ones that might just look the coolest. So the first one we're going to talk about today is actually the graph. So we all know I love the graph view in Obsidian, and in the graph view we now have the ability to add new color groups. So what this actually does is that this will actually take individual queries and then take the results of those queries and then give them a specific color in the graph. Now, there has been some CSS that we've been able to use uh, with the graph to specifically color each of these nodes. And if I pull that up here, I will actually find that CSS for you. Uh, we're gonna go to my um, vault here and we're gonna look for graph, graph formatting. So if you have my custom theme, you can see I have all of these different uh, numbers here to make it easy to see where different things are located. Now, we have the ability to customize different uh, colors of arrows, the nodes that are actually tags, attachments, uh, tags that don't, or the notes that don't exist yet, and the fill color of notes that do exist. So there has been some functionality, but not like an overarching, very customizable way of coloring all of your different nodes in your vault. So what we have now is the ability to add these custom colors to the nodes in the vault based on the results of search queries. So first of all, why should you care? Now, this is a really, really useful feature. We already had queries to filter and search our results for just what we want to look at and what we care about. What this is allowing you to do is, ta again, take advantage of that visual element of the graph and color it and style it and sift down your results because this is just by itself, this is my global graph, everything I have, and it is has its color group supplied, it has my custom CSS, this looks like a very graphical jumbled mess of links and items. Now by itself, this might not be useful at all. It's cool to look at, it makes you know really nice art, but when you combine it with the existing features we have of filtering our results, get rid of tags, attachments, only existing files, no orphans, I wanna search for anything related to ADHD, now we have a list of things. Now the red are my daily notes, so I obviously don't care about those, I'm caring about, okay, well what are all these other different colors? Uh, purple I have listed as my literature notes, and then green I have as evergreen notes, so I can easily see from this view with the color groupings what I care to pay attention to and what they might be linked to. This is already a really a great addition to being able to filter your results and again, visually separate them as well as just cut through the clutter and the noise, get to what you care to look at, and then easily see a visual classification of those items based on your queries here. And now you have a better grasp of your information and what's available and the connections between them. So you can maybe see an example here of how I'm using this. But how do I explicitly use this with my system, the way I have things set up, and the way I do things? So if we're going to go back to the full view of my vault here, we're going to get rid of, whoops, we're going to get rid of all of the noise, and we're just going to see just the graph itself, by itself. Pretty loud, pretty noisy, lots of stuff going on. When we look at my list of tags, you can see I have my nested tag system. Now, I don't think I've done an updated video on the nested tags. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. I plan to do my updated comprehensive workflow video soon, so then I will definitely cover it in gross detail there. But basically, I have this little memo emoji, and then all of its child, uh, child tag emojis are my evergreen notes in their various stages of processing. I have all my inputs, inbox, and then the actual input item, article, video, paper, etc., and then all of their stages of processing. And yeah, so what I really care about is that I can easily target the parents, just this icon, this icon, or I can target specific children. That's really useful for me because now with color groups, I can say, hey, all of my different evergreen note 
um, stages of processing, I want to have a different color of green. The newer the note, I want it very green. The uh, older the note, I want it very dark green. And again, I'm choosing Grubbox colors because Grubbox is life. So I have all of these different specific tags to target the children, which is each evergreen note status and it's a different color of green. So I can easily just say, ooh, look at all these different color green nodes. Awesome. And I can easily filter by a tag and say, hey, I only wanna see notes, my evergreen note vault. Great, I don't want attachments, I don't want tags, and I don't want, uh, I only want existing files. So not my, you know, my tags, tag system where I tag notes that don't exist. And now I can see just my evergreen notes of every stage of processing and how they are connected to each other. And this also lets me see Ooh, this orphan right here, this could connect to other things. I could connect these evergreen orphans to other things. Really, really useful already. And I can see this web develop. And yeah, I, I think you can already begin to see the value of seeing all of these different evergreen notes structured like this. Plus this is a filter. So I can easily add another filter to do something like ADHD. And now I can see an even filter down, even more filter down view of just that type of content. Again, this is a great additional visual tool of filtering down and sorting and classifying your information into individual clusters via color on the graph, as well as adding additional visual elements to this filtering ability of your graph. Now, as for what else you can see I have here, I have a lot of orange things that is really just, you know, utility notes or my output file folders, which is like, you know, my YouTube scripts, medium article scripts, whatever. So those are all orange things. Um, and then I also have my uh, inputs are all purple. So you can see all the different purple items. Those are all inputs like books or articles, podcasts, videos, what have you. The really uh, bright red are my daily notes. And then the really dark red are the, again, just the notes that don't exist through my tagging system, which is why you can see all these different things uh, that I might tag, like psychology here, and yeah. So this is how I'm currently approaching the color grouping. And the really cool thing is that this is the global graph, but if I opened up a note, for, like, for instance this, and I open up a local graph, I can do the exact same thing with the local graph. Now it's still a little buggy because I did have some local graph settings on this and it didn't stick, but you know, it'll probably get worked through eventually. And I've already requested for some things like being able to just paste the hex code here uh, and some other stuff. But you can also add color groupings to individual graphs like this local graph. And just as a quick aside, if you enjoy my uh, Obsidian content and you like what I put out, the notes I take and the way I do things, if you wanna know more about what I do and how I approach things, articles I find, really great tool discoveries and just have a, a more direct line of communication with me, I do have an email newsletter where you can also, by signing up, acquire my custom CSS, templates, workflow documents, and just ask for other things down in the description and pinned comment below. So do sign up and send me an email when you do and tell me what you're working on and what's going on. Another new feature that we have is something that's just like a little bit more quality of life change. So if I go to my workbench note and I'm going to, let's just make something, uh, let's call it, yeah, just untitled. Yeah, so untitled, which is usually the default note. And now we're going to actually create it. Okay, we now have the untitled note. I'm gonna say this is test. And great, we've renamed that file. Now, if we go back to Workbench, now it's renamed. Cool, yeah, because we, we changed the title of the note. This has been functionality that's been around for a while. But let's say we don't have to, have to open that note and then change the name, press enter, go back. That's a lot of extra friction. Now we can just easily click on this note and rename to Untitled. Great, we renamed it. And now if I open up this note, there we go. So that is a new little piece of just quality of life change that now I can just right click on this note, rename it without having to open it up and deal with it. It can just stick where it's referenced and stay in my note and easily refactor this name. Now something that's been around is in your normal file explorer here, you can actually hover over different files and then see some information about it. Like, oh yes, the information about when it was created, when it was modified, what its title is, that's cool. But one thing that we can now do is let's actually open up a note that has somewhat relevance. Now, if I open up the backlinks pane to this where it's backlinked and where it is unlinked, so I can easily see something like, hey, I want to see what's this about. Oh, yes. We now have the ability to hover over linked mentions and backlinks and see this modal pop up. 
as well as if I hover over this for the first time, you can see it actually highlights where it is in the document. That's really, really cool. So now I can easily hover over new things. And I can see where is this and up oh, there it is. It's in the footnote. And then this one, very cool. And you can see the application still moves up like that. It's probably just my, my fault there, but this is really, really cool about being able to easily see all the different mentions for this note in every other backlink mention. And it gives this nice little modal pop-up where we can easily just read through this and ah, yes, this is the relevant thing I care about. Go back to here and then we can edit. And this is, works for backlinks and it works for unlinked mentions. But also maybe you didn't know this. If you go to the graph view and you hold down the contr uh, control or command button over a partic particular note, if I hover over this and hold command, I can now actually see a modal pop-up of that particular file. So actually it'll pop up there. It doesn't really work too well over there. Maybe it's just a little buggy on mine because of CSS, but either way, this is a really cool way of seeing your particular note. Maybe I just need to zoom in more. And now there we go. I can just zoom in onto these particular notes and see the modal pop-ups for them. Just like that, just by holding control or command and the graph view. Now, one cool new feature that I actually can't show you because I don't want to show you my personal notes is the ability to open up your graph on your uh, Obsidian Vault onto a daily note. Now, actually, I don't think I made my daily note today. I did not. So actually what I can do is you can see that today is the 13th of February. So I haven't made my daily note for today. Now I'm going to go to the graph view and now I'm going to actually close Obsidian. So if I close this, okay. Now if I open up Obsidian, it will actually open up to my daily note, the 13th. Now this is a feature that you can actually set in the settings and I forget exactly where it is in here. Okay, found it. Now when you activate the daily note plugin, the core plugin in Obsidian, you get the normal settings here, template file, the new file location where you want your daily notes to be held, what date format do you want for the name. But now there's a new toggle option here that when you open your daily note or you open Obsidian, it will actually default to your current day's daily note. And if it doesn't exist, it will make it. So this was gonna be a little bit more of like a Rome-esque type of functionality where it drops you into your daily note and you can start your workflow from there. And personally, this is actually how I prefer to work. I don't tend to really close Obsidian too much, so it's kind of, it might be a little bit lost on me as a feature, but it's a really great feature that you can now leverage just by, you know, click a toggle button and you're good. And the last little quality of life change that it's just really nice to have, and it's kind of like one of those things that you don't really pay too much attention to, but when it's not there, it actually is kind of annoying, but now that it's there, it's just like things get a little bit nicer, which is the, the, the memory about folding. So you can see here, I have unfolded the color group selection in the graph. Now, if I close the graph, or actually I just closed Obsidian. Now, if I close Obsidian or close the graph, you know, okay, I defaulted to my daily note. I close that. Now let's open the graph again. It remembered that that fold was open. This was not existing before, if I remember correctly. So now this fold is remembered. That's really nice. Now it's not, I don't really care about that too much in the graph view, but where I really care about this is if I go to a note that actually has a um, hierarchy here. Ah, uh, yes, I know, C++ classes. Now, if we go here, there's a lot of different headings in here. There's a lot of different pieces of code. If I open up the outliner here, outliner, if we open up the outliner, you can see that there's a large outline for this file. Now, what I might want to do is I just want to, you know, collapse all these different headings, collapse, collapse, collapse. And I want to see only the second level headings. Okay, cool, whatever. Now, what happens when I click off of this file? If I go over and just go, okay, we're gonna go over to there, but now I wanna go back to that C++ classes file. Normally what happens is that those collapsed headings pop back up because it didn't remember the state that it was collapsed. Not anymore. Now folding is remembered and persistent. I can close files, quit Obsidian, open it back up, return to that file. Three months later, it remembers that there was a fold there. And this is a great quality of life change because now you can add different nested items, hide them as needed, make this basically like a spaced repetition, you know, toggle feature the way I think Ali Abdal used certain applications to do um, flashcards like in Notion. And however you want to leverage this, you can actually toggle and hide content and persistently keep it hidden until you untoggle it and show it again 
with the little toggle arrows. That's just an, a great quality of life change. Not something super, you know, overarching and visually apparent and easy to see, but now that it's there, it's like, oh, that is, that is nice. And that's really just the last of the features I'm gonna cover today. And so hopefully you found these features interesting. Let me know how you're gonna use them, what you like about them, what you dislike about them. We can always give the developers feedback. And so far I am just adoring the ability to color group the graph and be able to see things like, I only wanna see my inputs. Let me see only the things I have tagged as input items. And now I can see only those things, what sort of metadata I might tag them with, who I might tag them on, tags that are related to them, all different kinds of information that is pertinent, useful, filterable, groupable. And now I can see clusters of notes based on topic area even. So you could easily change this query to be about a topic about only ADHD. Let's just make this bright line green. That's gonna be about, let's just say, uh, the content ADHD. Now, look at all these different lime green things that popped up. You can see that it, some of them faded away. But now, uh, it's probably because most of them are actually evergreen notes. But if I did something like that, then you can see all these different things that have the AD characters, whatever. Now they're all highlighted. And with this, you can easily see groupings and clusters of content in your graph. And this is just incredibly powerful and useful to me. I, I'm just over the moon with this one. So let me know how you use these features. What do you like about them? And yeah, let me know your thoughts. And a quick note before we go, a big shout out and thank you to the patrons who support this channel on GitHub and Patreon. Thank you, Rito, Leonardo, Justin, Ed, Elliot, SH, Brandon, Klaus, Pippa, Alberto, Clark, Joel, John, John, Paul, Jimmy, and Rob. Thank you all for your support. I greatly appreciate it. Donating and supporting me within this channel is not required by any means. I just enjoy doing this, but every little bit of support is greatly appreciated, helps me improve the channel, and it's just nice to know that the work is appreciated. If you would like to donate and support the channel, the best ways to do that are on an ongoing basis, GitHub sponsors followed by Patreon, or if you wanna do like a single one-time thing, uh, the best way is either buy me a coffee or PayPal. So with that, I thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next one.